and welcome back, like clockwork. My name is Lee Asher. I am the president of 52 Plus Joker, and I welcome you to our virtual playing card collectors convention. This is our second day. No, wait, we're on our third day right now. What am I saying? That's, it's, it's blending together like it's one big amazing party. Day three. Are you guys enjoying yourselves? Show me some ones in the chat. Let me see some ones fly by me. There we go. There we go. Okay. I know you, some of you have been waiting very patiently for this. The first 50 lots were sold the last two days. And here's a great stat for you. 50 lots, okay? 47 of them sold. That's right. 47 of our 50 lots. That is a record for 52 plus Joker. That is all of you. Thank you. You guys are setting records. You're making this amazing time. I hope you guys are having a good time. And I see you are because I see the ones and I appreciate your love. Okay, so we're just getting final tech set. Larry's all set. We've got the auction site ready. Members, you better be logged in if you want to bid on it because this next auction lot, these are now, we're, we're done with the mail auction and now we're into the members lots. And wait till you see some of this stuff. I'm sure whoever gets stuff tonight, you're very lucky, very lucky. Okay, so let's do this. Let's go to the auction. Hello, folks. Welcome to tonight's third auction. Can people hear me? Yes, you can. Okay, this auction is different than the first two days' auctions. This is going to sort of be like the club auction if you're at the convention. So, lots 50 to 80, 51 to 80. Some of these decks have secret reserves. So, the way this is going to work is if a deck uh, the high bidder is below the secret reserve. You will ask the high bidder if they want to pay the secret. You will ask the secret reserve, and then you will ask the high bidder if they want to pay the secret reserve. And if they, if the answer is yes or no, we send a chat to either everyone or to Steve Foley. We send a chat to Steve Foley saying either yes or no. Hope people understand that, and we might want to reiterate that. Yeah, Larry, hold on. Before we begin, we're getting a lot of scratching noises from your audio. You want to bring him back so I can speak with him? Hey, Larry. Uh, we're going to try to solve your the scratchy sound. I don't know why it's there. It wasn't there for the first two days. So has anything changed? No, nothing has changed on my end. Hmm. Okay, the high bit is 55. Let's see. The high bid is 55. Can I get 60? The current bid is 55. Can I get 60? And a nice motion playing card poster. I have 55 going twice. Larry, the sound is terrible. Uh, there's no feedback here. There's no nothing else is on. Lot 51 is sold for 55 dollars. Thank you very much. Next up, we have National Lennox Lacquer Deck. 52 plus Joker plus extra card in DG condition. OB2, National Playing Card Company, from 1892. It's Hockman NU16. Beautiful backs. The current is $135. Can I get $145? I have $135. Can I get $145? Oh, now I have $145. I have $145. Can I get $155? I have $145. Can I get $155? Oh, there we go. $155. Thank you very much. Oh, we have a movement. Now we have 165. Thank you, folks. Now let's see if we can get 175. Here we go, 185. Can we get 195? We refreshed three times. The bid has not moved off of 185. There we go. It hasn't moved. That's the fourth time. We're going to go ahead and close this lot at 185. Okay. Lot 53 is a St. Louis aluminum deck from the St. Louis World's Fair of 1904, if I recall. Uh, it's 52 plus Joker, near mint, OB1. Very, it's very rare to see this in decent condition because you shuffle this deck once, it's never going to get shuffled again. It's Hockman SX20. Uh, it's a, everyone should own an aluminum deck. They're wonderful. There's three of them that I'm aware of. There's St. Louis, Buffalo, and the European one. 
And the printer is four hundred dollars. And I see myself for a lot more than four hundred dollars. I have four hundred dollars, can I get four twenty five? I have four hundred dollars, can I get four twenty five? Okay, so this deck has a hidden reserve of five hundred dollars. If the high bid at four hundred wants to pay five hundred, they can send a chat to Larry Harold or Lee. So whoever just bid. If you want this deck, go ahead and put it at 500. We'll refresh a couple more times. Um, and then after a bid, if it doesn't move, then we'll close the bid. Oh, there we go, 500 bucks. Thank you very much. $500, that's wonderful. $500, is, thank you very much. Okay, let's go ahead and close this lot out at 500. Congratulations, lucky bidder. Hey, next we have the four volume set of the tarot collection. A wonderful book, there's lots and lots of uh, of illustrations and lots and lots of descriptions of a lot of lots and lots of texts from 1981 of the Yale University Library Press. It's uh, I can tell you it's one of the most frustrating reference books I've ever made because the pictures aren't next to the descriptions. However, it does have lots of items in there. And I printed it's $90, and here we go. I have 110. Can I get 120? I have 120. Can I get 130? Oh, we've got some movies. I got Larry. Here's an interesting fact, Larry. Yale University now houses the Dawson collection. Really? Oh, that's a I shame. Be I believe Yale so. Won't let anyone see anything ever? Eventually. There's a book called The Map Thief, which is half about old maps and wonderful, and have a book about a guy who stole a lot of maps from a lot of libraries, including Yale. Yale was not very happy after this, and they stepped up their security procedures because they got painted in a very bad light by, by the map group. Yeah, I have 140, can I get 150? No, I have 150, can I get 160? I have 150, can I get 160? Folks, if you're wondering, I'm on the phone with Steve Bowling because he's entering proxy events. Thank you, folks. Now we're looking for 170. We have 160, now we're looking for 170. We're going to refresh three times. Oh, we've got some oh, movies. 170. Thank you, folks. 170. 170, can I get 180? I have 170, can I get 180? That's number three. And you know, since this was a, a contested lot, there was some, some bidding action. We're going to do it just one more time just to be safe. Yeah, now we have 180. Continue See? 80. See, Larry? We have 180. <laughs> We're trying our hardest to be as fair to everyone as possible. We appreciate that this is not eBay and things are not automatic. Maybe next year. Maybe next year. Absolutely. Kevin Raylick just posted that a set is going for $400 on Amazon right now. So I sold mine for 40 bucks. Hey. Hey, now we have 190 folks. Wow. <laughs> 190. Thank you folks. 190, can we get 200? We have 190, can we get 200? Now we have 200 folks. 200, can I get 210? We have 200, can I get 210? 200, can I get 210? 200, can we? Now I got 210. You think I get 220? No, now we have 220, folks. Thank you very much. 220, can we get 230? We have 220 for the carriage collection. Four books. Okay. We're going to close the lot 54 at 220. Congratulations, lucky bidder. Thank you very much, folks. Next up, we have lot 55, the Spanish Parker deck. It's 52 in good to very good condition. OB3, which means crap. It's around 1935. It says Maker Unknown, but it's a Spanish deck. It's got a good chance of being by Fournier. And uh, starting with $100, can we get $100 for the Spanish market deck? Okay, we're going to start hitting refresh. If the bid does not move off of $100, then we'll consider it closed. And by the way, when you get this deck, you know what you're going to say? Score! Oh. Sorry, oh. That's, it's for the soccer fans. Oh. Score, Larry. I thought it was score. Okay, I think we're going to go ahead and close lot 55. Next up, folks, we have lot 56. American Playing Card Rover, number 20. It's 52 plus Joker, excellent, OB2, by American Playing Card Company from 1898. It's Hotton L62. The price is $150. Nice old American deck, nice Joker. Nice box too. Can I get 150? I can I get 160. I have 160. Can I get 160? Here's 160. Thank you, folks. 
160, can I get 170? Like 160, can I get 170? Keith, can you zoom in on that box? Let's see how beautiful this box is. Matt Chat says this is a really, really nice box. Well, it's, it's got a little wear. It's got a little wear, but still, you don't see these kinds of boxes. Okay, we're going to close this lot. Lot 56 is closed at 170. Congratulations, lucky bidder. Next up, we have the English Playing Card Society transmission deck from uh, 1994, made by Carl, designed by Carl Derrick. It's written to plus Joker plus an info card. It's been mint with the original box in good shape. The card gets $250, can we get 260 Beautiful transformation deck. At 260 can I get 270 So, you know, Larry, we invited the EPCS to come join us this week. Well, hopefully a couple of members are. Oh, wow, I think so. Bucks. There we go. Thank you, folks. 300 can I get 325 uh, 300, can I get 225? We also invited the IPCS as well. My favorite convention, the IPCS, was in London many years ago. They did an incredible job. We also went to Oxford. We also had dinner with everyone, everyone by the Lord Mayor of London, and every speaker started with sheriffs, deputies, and the rest of us. There's an awful lot of fun. I have 300, can I get 225? I have 300, can I get 225? And that's three. Okay, we're going to close yeah. lot 57 at $300. Congratulations, lucky bidder. Thank you, folks. Next up is lot 58. Blue River Acorn double deck. From 1935 around. 52 plus two jokers. Mint sealed twice. From the Russell Playing Card Company. It's RUAP. The current bid is $55. Can I get 50? So Blue River deck. Now, what's the back? Let me see the back design here, Keith. Can you let's see what back design? There's a handful of these. I think. Let me see. What is that? Let's see what that says. Oh, an acorn. Acorn backs. Okay. So two acorn backs. Narrow. Very cool. Can I get 65? I have 60 bucks. Can I get 65? You know, I have 60 bucks. Can I get 65? And these are these are Russell. This was pr these were printed by Russell. It seems like there was a time where the United States Playing Card Company bought out Russell and started printing these. Yeah, hey, I have seventy. Can I get seventy-five? You know, usually the rosettes. You see this deck all the oh, time geez. on eBay with rosettes, but it's rare that you see the acorn backs. And that you know, and right. like the meadow and the acorn, those are those are really tough backs to get, especially okay. in this kind of condition. Thank you, folks. Thank you, Lee. I have 80. Can I get 85? I have 80. Can I get 85? Oh, oh 85. Have 85. Thank you, folks. I have 85. Can I get 90? It's red and blue. And like I say, the acorn back is not the easiest back to find in this series. Okay, that's three. Congratulations, Lucky Bitter. We're going to close lot 58 at $85. Thank you, folks. Next up, we have lot 59, George for Narrow Deck. 52 plus Joker plus a blank plus an extra card in mint condition with OB1 minus from 1920 by George Hurd. New York 83A. Hurd Spine Stationery. Located in New York, it's probably located downtown. Let's look at the papers for a second. That's pretty neat. Yeah, that right there. Look at that. We have lawn finish, damask linen, banknote bond. Suede and Herd's ideal auction. And I guarantee they're not in business anymore. Uh, sitting that downtown. Uh, fifty dollars. Can I get fifty-five? I fifty dollars. Can I get fifty-five? Let's uh, let's see the Joker. Judy'd like to see the Joker. Well, I guess Judy, that is the Joker, right? It's an ad card. I, these are the the four images we were sent. So there is. That's all we have, sadly. Hey, okay, I fifty. Can I get fifty-five? I have 55. I have 55, can I get 60? Okay, we're closing the lot. 59 at $55. Congratulations, lucky bidder. That's a steal. This is a really cool deck. Okay, next up we have lot 60. There are co comments here. Many decks use the that pattern. The, uh, I see on the back, on the box. Next up we have lot Victor 79. Lot number 60, it's 52 plus Joker and DG with a lousy box. A USPC for a 1900 with parking 31A. I have $85 on a nice Christmas deck. I have $85 going to get 90. 
and that's three. We're closing out lot 60. Victors to the victor. Congratulations, Lucky Bitter. Next up, we have Brian Pickle of Coca-Cola Neck. Pitch a simple stroker, mint, no box, so it looks like it's got a wrapper and a tax stamp. The wrapper is obviously good open, the three thirties. Brian Pickle against the Minnesota company. The current bid's $35. Can I get 40? I have $35, can I get 40? Nice old Coca-Cola deck. I have $35. Most people mentioned the, the Hindu sign. The Hindu sign on the previous box was generally slanted and that was not slanted. So it's not the Hindu sign. I uh, have $35 on the kind of big one deck. Can I get 40? I have $35. Can I get 40? Now we have 40 bucks. I think, didn't the, the original Coca Cola formula include cocaine? Anyhow. Larry, I leave us for a minute and I come back to this. Yep, 50, can I get 55? I have 50, can I get 55? And to Rhonda. Hi, Rhonda. Okay, we're closing out lot number 61 at $50. Congratulations. We are moving Next on. Next up, we have lot 62, the Anheuser Bush War Deck. 52 for Joker. Next, put the extra card in the end, OB1 minus, and then 1900 is W16. There are two versions of this deck. So this is W16. There's one with the new main, and then I guess one where the main had been sunk. The current bid is $325, and I get 350 Beautiful war deck. Near mint. You don't see this all the time. Near mint. And I should push. Get this deck. It comes with a bottle of Bud Light. 325 can I get 350 I have 325 can I get 350 Yes, Keith, go over the go over the faces of the royal cards. Let's look at some faces. Yeah, there we go. Yes, I think we have Teddy Roosevelt on one of them. Yes. Look at that Joker. Look at that Joker. I got 350. Can I get 375? Uncle Sam needs you to drink a beer. And to race horses. 350, can I get 375? I have 350, can I get 375? If someone says they don't buy alcohol decks, I'm not sure if Bud Light's considered alcohol. <laughs> Actually, it's like having sex in a canoe, Larry, and I'm not going to finish the joke. One more refresh. There we go. Uh, it has not moved, so I believe we will close the lot 62 at uh, 350. Congratulations, Close Lucky that, That's a great deck at a great price. Yep. Lot 63, Stephen 7 deck. My Brandon Bigelow again from 1943. This is Joker, an excellent condition with a bad box. The current bid is $35. $35, can I get $40? For Stephen 7 deck? I have $35, can I get $40? Uh, Thirty-five dollars. Can I get forty on the seven seven deck? Thirty-five dollars. Can I get forty? Not the sevens on this deck. It's very unusual deck, folks. The facts are all different. I have thirty-five dollars. Can I get forty? You know, Seagram's is a Canadian company, Larry. By the Brompton's. Well, they're probably they, not they, that they make ginger ale. Oh, there, there we go. Forty. The unusual back deck. Very pretty. Seagram seven. I have forty dollars. Can I get forty-five? Yeah, Jennifer, they absolutely make ginger ale. Google it. Not my uh, preference. Thank you, Jill. I well, prefer... Uh, would, go ahead, Larry. Go ahead. I said my son loves Shirley Temple. Seagram's nope. ginger ale. And Seagram's. Eggies. Seagram's ginger ale. I have 40. Can I get 45? I have 40. Can I get 45? We can hit refresh three times. All right, we're going to refresh three times. If it doesn't move off 40, then we will close the lot. There's one. I prefer to drink Canada dry. Literally. One drink at a time. Okay. Oh. We're, we're going to go ahead and close the lot at $40. Congratulations. Lucky bitter. Next oh, up, yeah. we have a Samuel Hart deck from 1858. NY24. Oh, yeah. 52 near mint. One way courts. No box. I have a different back than I've seen. I thought this is a very unusual address for Samuel Hart. So it's got to be one of the early ones. You have seven Broadway. I guarantee the factory is no longer there. NY24, the current is $500. Can I get $525? At $500, can I get $525? Can I make $10 your hotel? 
At seven dollars, make a custom cut, nice one way cord, so thick. It would not have come with a joker. But As we saw last this. night, Samuel Hart was a genius level playing card manufacturer. The legendary level. He's unlocked it. Queens, looks like your head's a little askew. Well, 416. I'll spike your GPA. Okay, so, 545. Can I get 550? I have 525. Can I get 550? I wonder if a cardist is bidding on this right now. He's going to spend this kind of money to do cardistry with these kinds of cards. How fun would that be? This is a tarot court. Kevin, can you make this deck disappear and then reappear? Oh, no. Well, now we have 600 bucks. Six hundred dollars for nice Samuel Hart deck. Six hundred dollars. Can I get six twenty-five? I have six hundred dollars. Can I get six twenty-five? Six twenty-five. I have six twenty-five. Can I get six fifty? I have six twenty-five. Can I get six fifty? If the bid, oh, I'm going to stop talking and let people start bidding. Now I have seven hundred dollars. Can I get seven twenty-five? So Todd, the first. Sorry, go ahead, Larry. Go ahead. Okay, the consigners have many of these decks because. From a logistics point of view, we couldn't have them all sent to Steve, so there's only so many consigners, but the consigners have most of the decks. Steve has some, and I have some. So folks, if anyone's interested in all standard decks, I have a Boston Card Factory deck in 1830 from a company with the original wrapper in mint, near mint condition. It's a deck that I've never seen before or since from the Boston Card Factory, one of the very, very early decks. So upstate New York has a place called Park Island. It's a beautiful castle called Bolt Castle. That was built by one of the guys who managed the Waldorf Astoria Hotel. And I have 725, can I get 750? I have 725, can I get 750? So Bill, Bill Kalush is asking if the grading is done by the consigner. And the answer is that the consigner certainly sent what they thought would be the grade, but Steve had the ultimate say over it. And I believe Steve did ask people to send additional photos just to make sure. So they're graded as best as we possibly could without actually touching or, or being near the deck. I have 750. Can I get 775? I have 750. Can I get 775? Hard to find this in good condition. Like this. I have 750. Can I get 75? Now I have 800. I have 800. Can I get 825? I have 800. Can I get 825? Oh, there we go. It moved. It moved to eight and a quarter. 825. Can I get 850? 825. Can I get 850? So, Todd, to answer your question, no. At this point, you can't drive to Steve because Steve has left California because of the smoke and uh, and the, the bad air, and he's up in he's up in Washington at the moment. So, we would love for you to drive over and hang out and have some drinks, but unfortunately, not this time. Nine hundred dollars. Can I get nine twenty-five? I have nine hundred dollars on the same heart deck. Can I get nine twenty-five? Nine hundred dollars. Can I get nine twenty-five? Nine hundred dollars. Done once. Nine hundred dollars done twice. It's certainly the nerves. Well, now I have nine seventy-five. Can I get a thousand? I have nine seventy-five. Can I get a thousand? Right, now we have a thousand. There you go. Next the chat wanted it. The 50. chat got it. Okay, now so we have oops. 1050. Can I get 1100? Now we can it properly. 1050. Can I get 1100? Okay, ladies and gentlemen, congratulations to the lucky bidder. Lot 64 closes for 1050. dollars Put some ones there, folks. Put some ones there. Put some ones in the chat. Larry says, "Show some love to Samuel Hart." Thank you, folks. Lot 65. And the, the lucky consigner. Starting bid is 500 bucks, 52 plus Joker, plus a blank. It's an excellent plus condition, OB3 minus. We're in 1920, it's Hockman W29. And this is a rear deck. And I've seen this thing sell for, I haven't seen this thing sell very often, but I've seen it sell for a lot more than 500 dollars. And I get 500 dollars to start the slide off. I have 525, can I get 550? Beautiful historical deck. I have 525. Can I get 550? The reserve is $950. And I'm going to go out on a limb and say we're going to close this as unsold. Okay, so we'll close this lot unsold. Sorry, Abe. 
Other than that, Miss Lincoln, how did you enjoy the show? You'll take a shot in the dark on that one? <laughs> I was waiting for that, Larry. I was waiting for that. Okay, next up, we lost 66, Russell Morgan, Thunder Squirrel, Four Deck. It's 52 plus Joker, Near Mint. The Russell Morgan box that says 2 minus. We're at 1881. It's hot in US 6. The current is $250. Next up, we have Joker, that's 300. Can I get 325? Is that you, 300? Okay. Can I get 325? So, for those of you who read Jason Kinistry's article, you'll know exactly who's on that Joker and uh, why he was so famous. Mr. Dunjury. That's right. And why? Uh, why is he famous, Larry? I have no idea. I've been well, doing this so long enough to know it's a Dunjury Joker. It I is. Know, I thought it was a happy is. Joker, but it's on Jerry. That's right. Daniel Wilson just said, my American cousin, and he's on to something. That was the play that was at Ford's Theater the night that Abraham Lincoln was assassinated. Now, the actor who played Don Jerry there, he's not, he was not actually there during that, the time that Abraham got shot. And I say Abraham like I knew him, by the way. Unbelievable. 350, now he has 400. I have 400, can I get 425? I have 400, can I get 425? And if you'd like to learn more about this guy, you should probably read Jay McKinnistry's articles. Uh, he is, um, he, he finds stuff that's so incredible and you learn so much about these people that are on these playing cards that you love these cards even more. So I suggest you all go back. Let's get the, the description. If we get the description copy pasted for Judy. So by the way, Sorry. John Lutz Booth's uh, brother was the finest Shakespearean actor of his time and lived in Gramercy Park. I have 425. Now I have 450. Can I get 475? All right. We're going to close okay, lot so, 66. So leave. This deck is actually on the hidden reserve of $500. Okay, hold on. So don't close it out, Keith. is going to pay it. Yep, $500 sold. Next up, we have 67 Time Magazine, 52 plus Joker, an excellent edition with the original box. It's from 1962. It's from 817. Very stylized. Quartz, very pretty deck. Currently it's $40, can we get $45? It even comes with an edition of Life magazine to go with it. I have $40, can we get $45? That's one of the first decks I ever bought. I just called to point out that it's an oversized deck. It is larger than a standard deck. I have no idea who designed it, but you obviously know how to make a very pretty deck. I have $40, can we get $45? Look at that beautiful broker. Do we know who actually printed the deck, Larry? I do not. Maybe Time Magazine could have printed it. They were a printer. They are a printer. Right. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, it's possible. I could go look at mine to find out. Here is oh, 45, then I get 50. I have 45, then I get 50. Beautiful deck. 58 years old. Came out the year after I was born. So I have 45, then I get 50. I have 45, can I, now I have 50. Can I get 55? I have 50, can I get 55? Hey, congratulations, Lucky Better. We're closing lot 67 out at $50. Okay. Now we're getting interesting. Oh, wow. Next up, we have Russell Morgan Tourist, number 155. 52 plus Joker, DG, in excellent condition, OB3 minus. So OB3 means crap. Circa 1886, it's the top of US 9. Tourist is not one of the more common decks. And that box definitely looks like it's been used a lot. I have $400, can I get 425? I have $400, can I get 425? This thing started at a much lower number. We already got the $400, thank you, folks. Yeah, there was a very low entry point for this deck. I was very surprised. Okay, we're closing lot number 68 at $400. Congratulations, lucky bidder. Next up, lot number 69. Next is a 17 postcard. They're in very good text and condition. Uh, in the early 1900s, some are a little later, but many of them have postmarks from the early 1906s and 70s and 80s. And the current is $30. Can I get $35? I have $30. Can I get $35? I 17 old postcards. Those of you who read card culture, you might recognize some of these postcards. They have appeared in card culture. We do a, a wonderful spread by Alex Clay's. I'm not sure if these are Alex Clay's from his collection. Uh, but he they're definitely not. posts. They're not. Okay, good. The, no, the, he they're posts. Not, but they're, they're sitting on my piano bench behind me. 
Okay. Because that there's that leather one. That's a leather one. Hold on, slow down there, Keith. That's leather. That's that is such a cool one. I've only seen photos. I've never actually held it in my hand. But we did an entire spread of these made of leather in, in a card culture a few months ago. Well, before you say leather, let me double check because I don't think it's leather. And yes, it is definitely leather. Okay, yeah, I, I thought so because we, like I said, we did a spread on that a few months ago in card culture, and I was very impressed with them. And it's got two stamps on the other side. Oh, so we got a bit of 40. I have $40, and it's mailed to Mrs. John Campbell on Providence Street. Wait, Mrs. John Campbell? This is the original Mrs. John Campbell. Uh-huh. And it's postmarked from 1907. Oh, look at it. Here we go. It's coming down. Let's take a look at it again, Keith. Can you show us the uh, leather? Are, are there two okay. leather ones? I see, I see. I think I see two. So there's one. No, right? Oh, no, one. it's the back. It's the back. It's the back, right. Sorry. It's only one leather one. And so that's what two. the face looks like. Let's look at the back, Keith. It's on the, the next picture. The leather one has two one-cent stamps with Benjamin Franklin on them. That's pretty cool. And it was mailed from Provincetown. I am not the consigner. I just happen to have the card with me. Now I have 55. Can I get 60? I have 60. Let's... Can I get 65? Let's see those postcards, those others, one more time. I have 60. Can I get 65? 60 going once. 60 going twice. That's three. Okay. We're going to go ahead and close out lot number 69 at $60. Congratulations, Lucky Bitter. Enjoy that leather postcard. Lot number 70, Willis Russell, regular Joker. It's, uh, it's in excellent condition. It's from 1906. It's talking RU5. And the credit is $35. Can I get 40 Just the Joker. One card. $35. Can I get 40 $35 going once. $35 going twice. We're going to close lot 70 at $35. Congratulations, lucky bidder. Next up, we've lot 71. Hutton Sons Square Corners deck. Mm -hmm. uh, Hutton Sons is a British maker. It's 52, the next in condition. It would not have come with the Joker for an 1850. I have no idea how it's put in a bid of $156. What can I tell you? Next is 166. What about you probably putting 170? Nice old deck from England, one way courts. There are books that can tell you how you can date these things because uh, they have numbers on the ace of spades. I thought it was by taking them to dinner and being a gentleman. By the way, the tax stamp base of spades on the old British decks from around 1800, if you didn't, if you saw the deck without the tax stamp, the penalty was death. Stealing was bad, but stealing from the crown was worse. Now I have 200 bucks. I have 200 bucks and I get two cents. So all Hutton Sons, get one of the David, go ahead and go to the website. I'm sorry, David Riley's having an issue. He wants to bid on this deck. Just go ahead and, and go to the auction. Go to the website and click. Or, or, there you go. There's the link right there. I actually have a poster of George III playing this. Okay. So it has not moved off of 200 after multiple refreshes. I can assume that all bids are in. We're going to go ahead and close lot number 71 at $200. Thank you, folks. Cool. Wait, 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 wait. Nope, no, there's the bid. There we go. You see, I'm glad we waited. I'm glad we waited. <laughs> 210, can I get 220? I have 210, can I get 220? Okay, we're going to go ahead and close out lot number 71 at $210. Congra and there was a fifth one. Con congratulations, lucky bidder. Next up, lot 72, US PC Tigers Joker and Poker Chip. Joker plus five chips in DG plus condition. I presume the chips are in better shape. It's for an 1895, it's top of US 1B. Look at that Tiger Joker. The tiger looks straight out of its wood. The current bid is $50. Can I get $55? The current bid is $50. Can I get $55 on a nice tiger filter plus five chips? Take them to the casino, bring the chips in, and get more money for the chip. I got $50. Now I have $55. Can I get $60? I have $55. Can I get $60? And a filter and five chips. Are the chips related to the filter? Okay, I saw the chips are by USPC. USPC. All right, I don't know if they belong with the Joker. I have 60. Can I get 65? Can I get? 
Okay, I have 60, can I get 65? I have 60, can I get 65? Yeah, USPC used to be in the business of making really cool poker chips. And just recently, they've put out virtual poker chips, you know, poker chips you can download and print yourself. So they've really come a long way. Virtual poker chips. Can I get 70? I have 65, can I get 70? I have 65, can I get 70? I have 70, can I get 75? I have 70, can I get 75? Question is, what do you print poker chips with? My son's school has a 3D printer. Now I have 80, can I get 85? I have 80, can I get 85? I see those chips are written off in 1885, the answer to that is I have no idea. Yeah, I think they're, it says they're circa 1895. I but they could the be. Chips are they could be. In 1900, not 1895. The chips are not original for the 1885. Ah, uh, okay. okay. I have 80 bucks, can I get 85? I have 80 bucks, can I get 85? I have 85, can I get 90? I have 85, can I get 90? We're going to go ahead and close out lot number 72 at $85. Congratulations, lucky bidder. Thank you, folks. Next up is lot 73, the A.G. Mueller Alchemist deck from 1967. A.G. Mueller is a German company. Question. Oh, it's Swiss. I'm sorry, it's Swiss, I think. Does it come with the report? Uh, I don't know. It's 36 in mint, it'll be one. Condition, the purpose is 60 bucks. Can I get 65 for the nice alchemist gift? Are there any alchemists in the room? I got some coal that I'd like to turn into gold if there's any alchemists around. I have 60 bucks, can I get 65? Now I have 65. Can I get 70? I have 65, can I get 70? Now I have 70. Thank you, folks. 70, can I get 75? Now I have 75. Can I get 80? I have 75, can I get 80? I have 75, can I get 80? Yeah, probably a stat deck. Oh, we have 80. That's why That's why we do the safeties, Larry. Thank you, folks. I have 80, can I get 85? I have 80, can I get 85? Here's 85. Now I have 85, can I get 90? I have 85, can I get 90? Yep. Now I have 90? Okay, we're going to go ahead and close out lot number 73 at $90. Congratulations, lucky bidder. Next up, seven, lot 74, Steamboat 999. 52 plus Joker in GG condition, and trust me, this box is a piece of crap. Okay. Now, this is an interesting one, Larry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, uh, it's US 7J, but if I recall, picture in Hockman says F of Cincinnati has some numbers, and this one doesn't have any numbers. And if you see the 499, this is lot 499 from the uh, Lenny Schneer auction in 1990. So this yes. Is for Lenny Schneer to collect. He's one of the founders of 52 plus Joker. So 52 plus J, GG condition with a nice steamboat Joker. Like I said, the Ace of Spades is a variation on the on the Ace of Spades that's in Hockman. Hockman has like those numbers written underneath the word Cincinnati. So it's that like nice variation. You see all there the three hearts this in the corner. And this was sent to me, so I'm, I'm the one who graded it. So there's definitely some soiling on it. And there you can see a little mark on the ace of spades on the, on the middle of the right side. That's Steamboat 999 by Russell and Morgan. There's that box. The like to the box is the mill over. Buy a, buy a steamboat. Maybe I threw the box into the water. The current bid's 180, can I get 190? The current bid's 180, can I get 190? So Laurent says in the, the chat that this was the first Russell Morgan Company um, steamboat. And uh, yeah, that's true. It's not the first steamboat deck. Steamboat decks have been printed for actually a very long time before that. Uh, United okay. States, uh, Russell Morgan was late to the game actually on this one. Okay, the current bid's 220, can I get 230? The current bid's 220, can I get 230? We actually think that steamboats started around the Thomas Crehor. Uh, Samuel Hart time. I have 230. I have 230. Can I get 240? I have 230. Can I get 240? And here's here's an interesting story, Larry, that Rod Starling wrote about in a CTD many years ago. Because Russell Morgan was so late to the game, they looked at everyone and saw, okay, well, there's a number zero, and then there's a number nine, and there's a number 99. We're going to be number 999. <laughs> so they're, they're much better. Well, definitely a marketing move. <laughs> Oh, there now we have 250. 250, can I get 260? 250, can I get 260? So my modern guys out here, here's something interesting. We think, we think the forerunner of the steamboat was actually called Fulton's. 
That's right. That's right. Fulton's. Now, obviously not after Brad Fulton, um, but after Robert Fulton, the man who, who's credited as creating the steamboat. And Crehor, right. we, see, we see Thomas Crehor sell the Fulton brand. Tessie, there was a Leonard Schneer lot number. Yes, that's lot number 499 from the Schneer auction, and I have the catalog. I yeah, let's go over the 40, 499 tag, Keith, please. There we go. Robert Fulton was buried downtown. If people under Wall Street goes from a graveyard to the river. So that's how Wall Street means it. 250, can I get 260? 250 going once, 250 going twice. Now I got 260. There you go. Thank you. I got 260, can I get 270? Could you go on the Jokers for a second? Can I get 270? Nice steamboat there. So these come with the, the watermelon Jokers or Joker. And uh, we'll we'll hear more about that tonight. If you if you attend Rory Rennick's discussion, his lecture, he's gonna he's gonna get into depth about racially charged imagery on playing cards. Uh, the worst of that is the circular spoon card. Yeah, well, yeah, he'll certainly talk about those. Okay, two hundred sixty dollars. Can I get two seventy? Two sixty? Can I get two seventy? Someone's asking about the steamboat name. He was talking about the steamboat name goes back for thirty or forty yeah. years. Before Fulton. The it was originally, I think, I, you know, it was originally the Fulton brand, and that was named after Robert Fulton, the man who was credited as, as creating the steamboat. If you want to read more about the steamboats and their, their lineage, you can go back in card culture about three or four months ago. Yours truly wrote the article. That's why I know so way too much about it. <laughs> One more refresh, and then we'll call it a day. Okay, so lot 74, we're going to close out at 260. Congratulations, Lucky Bitter. This was a deck from the Lenny Schneer collection. So cool. Next up, we have Grunner Schneider Transformation Deck. Beautiful transformation deck from 1852. It says 52 VG. It would not have come with a Joker. It doesn't have the, uh, the catalog number from the field catalog. If someone's interested, I could look it up for them. Yeah, maybe we can yeah. zoom in on a couple of them and take a look at them. Uh, they're really beautiful. Uh, unfortunately, okay, Larry, the, this is as, as best we can see the imagery. You have to remember that each lot came with an average of three to four photos. And we, you know, the, the server is, is basically serving all of these photos at the same time. And so we, ha we had to lower the res on a, a bunch of them, actually. There is a proxy bid on this, and I want to make sure that that's Steve at 340. 275 for the next transformation deck. Very pretty and clever deck. That's 275, can I get 400? Okay, we're going to refresh several times. And and we refresh for a reason. If you're if you're getting your bid in at the last second, we're trying our best to, to make it count. But if you are waiting literally to the last second and you miss it, I you know, we're 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 trying our best here, guys. We're trying our best here. So we apologize if things go wrong. Uh, but we, we are trying our best to make sure that it is fair to everyone. So please don't wait to put your bids in. Get your bids in now if you're going to bid on something. Okay, this we're going to refresh. Are there pictures there? I have no idea what they are. Lee, do you know what those pictures are? Uh, let me see here. I do no, not. No, it's, it's the writing. Okay, so we're going to refresh it. We're going to refresh it three times. Pictures of writing. I'm sorry, Keith, what notes of... Handwritten fortune telling notes. Uh, they're handwritten fortune telling notes. There you go. And Larry, what it's it's reading your fortune. It says you're going to be going on a long journey. So sold. It hasn't moved. We're going to go ahead and close the lot out at 375. Congratulations, lucky bidder. This deck, I don't have the deck. I actually just have the uncut sheets. And they're different versions of the uncut sheets. 575 is sold for 375, and that's sold in about 76. We're nearing the end, folks. It's a narrow golf deck, 52 plus Joker, very good condition. Hockman US, it says US 8FA question mark. It's circa 1925. I don't know why there'd be a question mark for the for Hockman, however. Probably because the A wasn't pictured. And we're assuming that it was the A version and not just okay. the US uh, 8F, but the US 8F A. That's a guess, Larry. Okay. Oh, the A slightly different. Okay. Uh, it's 35. And I okay. seem to remember we just sold one of these in the mail lot. There's 35, can I get 40? I have 35, can I get 40? 
I got 40, so now I have 50. I have 55, can I get 60? I have 55, can I get 60? Now I have 60. I have 65 going once. I have 65 going twice. We have 70. I have 75. Can I get 80? I have 75, can I get 80? Now I have 80. I got 85. Can I get 90? Can I get 90? I have 85. Can I get 90? I have 85. Can I get 90? Okay, we'll go ahead and close this lot out at $85. Congratulations, lucky bidder. We even did a sixth one, just to be sure. Hey, next up we have the Hargraves book. Lot number 77. It's in near mint condition. It's from 1930. By Catherine Perry Hargraves. It's a wonderful reference book. The price rate is $60. I paid a heck of a lot more for mine, but mine's signed. Uh, I printed 60 bucks. It's got wonderful pictures in there. Yeah, so you know what's really cool about in the back of this book? She she lists off the, the early collection that United States Playing Card Company owned. And so if you want to know what USPCC has or had in their museum at one point, you flip over to the back of this book and it'll, it'll give you... Uh, um, Amwake um, certainly certainly helped her put all of it together and give her gave her a bunch of research. He was integral in this book, and I think it's dedicated to him. Okay, it's got thirty wonderful color plates. It was signed by a vice president of USPC. The current bid is sixty five dollars. Can I get seventy? A famous cardist. A famous cardist last week actually contacted me and asked me uh, if I could name three books that he must have for playing card history, what would they be? And this is certainly one of the books that I listed. Yes, absolutely. Beautiful pictures in there. Look at those pictures. Beautiful pictures. I have 70. Can I get 75? Jason says, this is a big one. He wants the signature. Jay, I'll sign it. You want me to sign it on walk, or do you want me to sign it uh, Hargrave? Your choice. I have 75. Can I get 80? I have 80. Can I get 80? I have 80. Can I get 85? Like I said, I've seen this book sell for $200. $85, can I get 90 Or $85, can I get 90 And 90 Now I have 90 Can I get can I get an even 100 I have 90 Can I get an even 100 I have 90 Can I get an even 100 Thank you, folks. I have 100 Can I get 100 Now I have well, Now I have 125 Can I get 135 I have 125 Can I get 135 I have 150 Can I get 160 50 going twice. Now I have 200. Thank you. Nice bid. $200. Can I get 210? 210. Can I get 220? 250. Can I get 260? I have 260. Can I get 270? Now I have 300. Can I get 225? I have 300. Can I get 225? 250. Can I get 375? I have 250. Can I get 375? Yeah, guys, I don't know why the static is back. We were doing so well. Nothing has changed. We, ha we literally haven't touched anything. <laughs> 350, can I get 375? But we do know this. It is definitely on Larry's side, and uh, we'll, we'll definitely try to have this fixed for tomorrow. Okay. It hasn't moved, so we're going to assume that the bidding is ended. Thank you very much. We're going to close the lot at the whatever it was. I Sorry, I missed it. It, it, it came and went too fast. This is Robinson's Bicycle Handbook. This uh, is Robinson from 1954. It's in near mint condition. It's got some beautiful uh, bicycle back picture here. I have seventy five dollars. Can I get eighty? I have seventy five dollars. Can I get eighty? Here's to you, Mrs. Robinson. Very, very good, Jay. <laughs> I have eighty. Can I get eighty five? Eighty. Can I get eighty five? By the way, for those of you who are interested, ninety. Can you get hundred? There are people who are interested in Mrs. Robinson's handbook. If you go to the club website, don't do it right now because it'll kill the server. But if you go to the club website, log in, you can go down to the section where we have our newspaper clippings. It'll take you over to newspapers.com. We have 800 plus clippings from the newspapers from the 1700s up. And there's a wonderful, just type in Robinson, there is a wonderful interview with Joe Robinson in her local newspaper, I think in the 60s. And it's very cool. I came across it about six months ago. It's there for you to read if you're into it. Now I have 125. I have 125. It's the sign. It's dated. I was told this is the Bible. If you point bicycle goes, this is the Bible. So how many times are you going to get an opportunity to buy this? 125. And in the second, I have 135. I have 135. Can we get 145? I have 145. Now I have 200. 
225, can I get 235? 250. I have 235. If it's 250, can I get 260? Oh, there we go. I have 300, can I get 225? I have 300 going once. I have 225. I have 325. Now I have 350. Can I get 375? I have 350, can I get 375? We're going to go ahead and close lot number 78 at $350. Congratulations, lucky bidder. Oh, here uh, we go. I think we've all been waiting for this one, Larry. Uh, the the Norwood deck, lot 79, USPC, Norwood number 85. This is uh, 51 plus junker in good condition. Remember, good is not good condition. OD3, which means the box is in crap. Actually, looking at the deck, it does not look to be in that bad of shape. So, good plus it says. Um, obviously, it's heavily soiled on its edges, but it's there. It's got, if I recall, US 25, it has 12 color printing. This is made a special deck made by USPC in 1909 for a banquet they held. The current rate is $1,650, and I get $1,600. At $1,650, can I get $1,600? I believe uh, Judy's told me once that she believes there are less than 10 of these in existence. Beautiful old deck. Uh, this one obviously has seen better days. I have fifteen fifty. Can I get sixteen hundred dollars? Guys, you might never see this deck up for auction again, ever. It's one of those. Yeah, sixteen hundred. Can I get sixteen fifty? No. It's time for a banquet. I see this deck. It was in the it was in the, the USPC museum. I we have auctioned it off at least once before. Uh, in better shape. But I don't remember when, but it was many years ago. And it's like this. It's, it's 12 color printing. So it's a very special job they did. They did a special printing job just to make this deck. You give it out of the bank. Oh, wow, well, I have 1750. Folks, remember, if you're bidding, it's 51, it's missing a card. So it's no surprises, it's 51 missing a card. Rhonda's asking, are there two versions of this deck? That's my knowledge. As far as I know, there's only one version of this I've never heard of two. Yeah, no, I think there are two backs, Larry. Let's go scroll over to the back again, Keith. Yeah, I think there, it's, it's there's two different backs. I remember Tom and Judy um, had images of one at the house, and that was not the image; it was the other image that that was they were hanging. Hey, I have 1750. Can I get 1800? I have 1750. Can I get 1800? Scott so Goodman says that this is the storm version. Are there any quirks you can show? No, sadly, this is they, they only supplied us with one image. What you see is what we got. 1800, can I get 1850? If you guys want to learn more about the Norwood 85, Rod Starling has written some fantastic articles. That's right, Paul Bostock. Thank you. Rod Starling has written some spectacular pieces on the Norwood 85 and the hunts for Norwood 85. Guys, do not wait to the last minute to bid on this, please. Now I have 1950. Can I get two grand? Like I said, we we just want to guarantee that everyone gets their bids in, and that everyone has a fair crack at this, because this is kind of a one once in a lifetimey kind of thing. Maybe a twice in a lifetimey kind of thing. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and close out this lot, lot number 79, for 1,950 dollars. Congratulations, lucky bidder. Okay, Larry, this is our last lot of the evening. And it's Next a good one. The Thomas Prehorn deck, it says 1820. However, it's probably a little later. I don't think he was making decks particularly in 1820. There are different versions of Prehorn. I have one, and you try and count the stars and compare it to a Hockman book, and you end up pulling your hair up. So it says Hockman U4. However, it's probably around 1830. And it looks like it's in very nice shape. It's a 52 VG. And it looks to be a nice shape that cannot be the original box. Uh, it's at 325. Can I get 350? At 325, any bits on the pre deck? Nice early standard deck, one way ports, square corners. Crehor was an interesting guy, you know. There's some research that's being done right now. This is for the magicians in the room. Uh, some of the earliest magicians to play the United States were playing near where Crehor was selling his cards at the same time. So there, it's perhaps they might have been using Thomas Crehor cards to perform magic with. How cool is that? One of the earlier makers in this country, Thomas Crehor. 
Yeah, that's right. I believe the Hawkman considers him the patriarch of American playing card manufacturing. I have 375. Can I get 400? I have 375. Can I get 400? Nice, very early American deck. 200 years old. Here about. And this is the guy who, who brought, put out the Fulton line, which we think is the precursor to the Steamboat decks. I have 400. Can I get 425? So David Riley is asking about the yellow wrapper. Uh, that is, that sounds like a good guess. Uh, we're not sure, David. This is the only image that we were given. Yeah, it does look like part of the box. It does look like part. Of, it looks like it's been written on. It looks like it's the inside of the box according to Steve. I have 550. Can I get 600? I have 575. Okay, I have 650. Can I get 700? This is the last lot of the night. This is the last lot of the night, but certainly not the last event, guys. So. If you don't have to leave, please stay tuned because Rory Rennick is up next. I now have 700. Can I get 725? I have 700. Can I get 725? Now I have 725. 750 now. Can I get 800? I have 750. Can I get 800? 750 going once. 750 going twice. Oh, we've got I have some 775. movement. I have 775. And now I have 800. Can I get 850? I have 800. Can I get 850? Now I have oh. Brian's asking, is this lid hinged? I mean, it looks like it's hinged, Brian, but we don't think so. We think that's just a it's it's a cardboard-style telescoping case that slides on and off. It definitely has that cardistry touch style tuck, doesn't it? It looks like it does. Uh, yeah, that is a standard style tuck. I mean, they were doing telescoping cases back then. It was a very fancy way of presenting the deck. Uh, before that, they were just wrapping the cards. I have 850 going once, going twice. Now I have 900. I have 950. Can I get 1,000? I have 950. Can I get 1,000? Then this post a nice high note. I have 1,000. Can I get 1,050? Okay, we can safely close out lot number 80 at $1,000. Congratulations, lucky bidder. Let's get some ones in the chat room. This was a great auction day. Lots of great lots. The Norwood 85, Crehor, Hart. Spectacular, spectacular. Larry. Thank you so much for your help. We're going to try to get that mic fixed, That the, the scratchy noise. Again, we apologize. Uh, we're rolling with the punches, everybody. We're rolling with the Thank punches. Thank you. I apologize for the scratchy noise. Uh, Rory Rennick is up next. You do not. You do not want to miss this. We'll see you in five.